So again, targets, assessment, figuring out how we're going to score it, and then actually scoring the student work. And then comes the data piece. What is this actually going to look like? How are we going to collect these answers? And here is one suggestion for you. Again, I made this up for the purposes of today. So what you are seeing up here is a complete miracle. You are seeing three teachers who all have exactly 20 students, and everybody was there and took the test, right? No absences. So you are seeing some scores. You are seeing in this particular way that the data is arranged, which may or may not work for your team, you are seeing that the three different scoring areas are across the top. And then down the side, you have the students. And tucked inside after student, it says teacher A, teacher B, and teacher C. So one teacher would be teacher A, another one B on the team, and another one C on the team. And then we could look at our data. We would decide in advance what is proficiency. Is two out of three proficient? Do we need three out of three? Is it the same number for each of the targets? That is going to be up to your team. You're going to have to have, again, those conversations. What does it mean to be proficient? If it is two out of three, you might go through here and circle or highlight all of the ones to get a better picture for how many students still need to learn the content, which classrooms they are from, um, and which student. Is the same student not learning all of the standards, or is it just one out of the three? What, is it, what does that picture actually look like? Because what I hope you can see at the bottom is that the averages really don't tell you much. So if each teacher is calculating the average score for each of those targets, it's really not going to give us any place to go. Now, you may or may not have the fortune of being able to look at your data for the first time and calling yourselves teacher A, teacher B, and teacher C. I have found working in teams, looking at data, that the first time, if you've never done it before, the first time it can feel a little threatening because you're kind of opening up that grade book. And we don't often do that as teachers. I know I never did that for the first 10 years that I was teaching. So what does that mean to open that up and all of a sudden let others see what I'm doing and judge? We, you know, we think they're judging now how have I been grading my students and where my data has been coming from. So if you have a coach, um, I was able to do that role as an instructional coach at first, or somebody, even a department chair, or somebody, um, another grade level team member who's willing to take some of the data and organize it for you, it can be helpful to have teacher A, teacher B, teacher C, and then what I would do is slip each teacher a post-it note with their letter on it so they knew which teacher they were as we were looking at data. But I've done this now well over 100 times. And I can't promise it will happen with you, but I can share with you that every single time I've ever done this with a team, somebody eventually says, I'm teacher B, can we just talk about this? And somebody else says, I'm teacher A, and from then on, we never have to do it again. But it, sometimes it, it, there's a little bit of a hurdle to jump, okay, to, get over, to get across, to realize it's really not as much about us as it is about the kids and what it is they're learning. And when we start talking about the data in that way, it becomes less threatening to have our names attached to it because we're all problem solving together to help our students. So if you have that as an opportunity, great. It might also be that you truthfully don't have the time to put all of your data into a spreadsheet. Okay, I, I did that for a while for our teams when we were first starting PLC work. And I can tell you it was not a good use of my time to chase down teachers to try to get their data to put it nicely into a spreadsheet so that we could talk about it. Um, we quickly learned that was just not really going to be sustainable. It wasn't going to work. And so you're going to need to figure out on your team, based on who's on it, what that looks like for you. And I was working with a geography team, and one teacher said, could I please always take our data and put it into a spreadsheet for us. I love working in Excel, and I can make charts, and I can do all kinds of great things. And could I please, in return, never write an assessment in Word? And the team said, yes, please, that would be great. So it does not mean he's not a part of the team in creating the assessment. He's editing. He's working with the team to do it. He really just does not like working in Word. Um, and he loves Excel spreadsheets. So they have some beautiful things, and he's been able to do that for them. That may or may not be true on your teams. Plenty of teams I work with, that is not the case. So they come in, and they write down how many are proficient on a piece of paper, and then shine the document reader up, and everybody sits around it and looks at the numbers that are there. Or elementary schools, I've seen teachers take on, make data walls and take different colored post-it notes 
mine are green, yours are yellow, yours are blue, and we write our students' names on them, and we move them around based on whether they are proficient or not on the board. We can tell by the color of post-it note which classrooms we're talking about, and we can tell by the number of students in each category whether or not they are proficient. I've seen other people just write it on the whiteboard, and somebody takes their phone at the end and takes a picture and prints it out for the team and puts it in a binder so that they can reference that for the next year. So again, as we're talking about data, we have to talk about what will allow you to quickly interact and talk about it as a team so that you can answer questions three and four. What do we do if students haven't learned it? What do we do if they have? We don't want to sit around and wait for two weeks to talk about the data and do something because the kids have long forgotten it by then. In fact, they actually need you to do something within 48 hours um, if you really want to make a difference in their learning. So something to keep in mind.